Hey guys, I'm David Madarby, and I'm here to open up all the Cons with Tark here pre-release packs that you'll be finding tonight at your local pre-release. So anyway, if you haven't heard of me, I'm the star of Commander Versus here on StarCityGames.com, and you can watch me play Commander with my friends. It's awesome. I write articles, but all that is boring. What's exciting is Cons with Tark here, pre-release packs. I'm doing the Mardu Horde. Bam! Here it is. They fight with speed because I'm fast and I like fast things and I gotta go fast. So let's see what's in this pack. Here we have the Mardu Horde pre-release pack. We will battle with speed. Uh, we've got angel wings. Uh, they're not really angel wings, but uh, they're more like war paints. But it looks like angel wings, doesn't it? Kind of like with a halo. You need a halo, and uh, onto my halo, halo. Hey, wait, that's umbrella. I don't know, man. I'm not a very good singer. All right, so you will open up the Mardu Horde. The Mardu are field warriors descended from elite imperial cavalry. So we're black, white, red. We like to attack, but as long as we have our con. We will attack even better. Oh, blood soaked champion. Marmaduke Horde, why you do this? Come on, Marmaduke. Why are you doing this, Marmaduke Horde? So we got a sticker, which I will stick, a pin, which I will pin, packs, which I will pack, and a dice, which I will die. 12. That's about me. Okay. So we didn't get our con. We did not get Zergo Helm Smasher. But we got Blood Soaked Champion. So one of them is better in limited, one of them is better in constructed. I'll give you a hint, this is the one that's better than limited. He's a 2-1 for 1, kind of like a Gravecrawler, but you can pay 1 in the black and return him from the graveyard, only if you attack. Well, you're playing 2-1s for 1. I'm pretty sure you're attacking. Wizards loves to reward us with things you want to do already, like landfall, or prowess, or raid. So I will be attacking, and I'll be bringing this guy back. If I have some way to sacrifice a creature, this guy will be numero uno on the sacrifice chart. You look at the look at the chart and say, who to sack today? Zergo Helm Smasher, a goat, you know, no, Blood Soak Champion, number one. So we got this guy. So as as is known for a black, white, red aggressive decks, we want to attack. So we've got a guy that, this is the only raid trigger that is actually bad for you if you didn't attack, you lose some life. But, so four, five for four, you probably attacked. It's good. Old Rough Rider, when he attacks, something can't block. This is powerful. If you ever played with um, Master Infiltry guy that taps a guy when he attacks, it's the same thing. He's a 5-4 five, for 5, which is, you know, about normal, but also their guy can't block. Their big guy can't block. Oh, they played a 4-4? Four, four. Sorry, you're taking 5. And when your life total starts at 20, and you deal 25% of that every attack with one creature that is sort of evasive, that's good. That, that's good. That's good right there. Oh, yes. That's good. Despise, Nomad Outpost, Removal spell, uh, a guy that lets you cast a morph creature, or since we're actually black, white, red, he lets you, you know, on turn six, you can play this guy, attack with him, play him, then play this guy, because you got the mana to fix. He fixes your mana too. He's everything you want. Uh, kill shot, it's a removal spell, a 2 2 for two haste that has to attack. Oh, that's a little too much attacking. Slow your bow, slow your reins, man. Grab the reins, slow your roll. Goblin. Um, Ponyback Brigade, he comes to the party, brings his friends too. He's that guy that brings his friends to the party. You don't really want him to, but they're there. You're going to have a good time. Uh, this guy, if you attack the discard a card, hey, 2 1 for 2. Trades the Morph Creature. He trades up. They pay 3 mana for the Morph Creature. You play 2 for your 2 1. He trades with it, and they discard a card, which, if you attack, which you probably did. I'll take it. 5 2 for 5. <laughs> don't play this guy. <laughs> you know what's in this set? X2. Uh, two, 2 X's. You know what he is? An X2. That doesn't work well for you. One more death touch for a white and a black. He can attack, and uh, if they block, you give him death touch, and he trades with anything, like a 2-2. Uh, Tormenting Voice. You know, these kind of cards, they don't do anything. Generally, in an eliminated environment, you want 17 lands, 14-ish creatures, maybe more, maybe less, and that only gives you like room for like six spells or something, six or seven spells. This is a spell that actually doesn't do anything, but in the mid game, mid to late game, you keep a land in your hand, you discard a land with this card, you draw two cards, you haven't actually gone up on card quantity, but you go up on card quality. And as we know, we all love quality, because I love console tar gear booster packs that contain fetch lands, which can help me pay for my rent. Or we can open up Clever Impersonator. So it's not a fetch land. It's not a black or a white or a blue card. We're not playing limited. But it is the greatest clone ever released. Phantasmal Image costs two, it's pretty good. Phyrexian Metamorph costs three and two life and copy artifacts, pretty good. This is four mana, oh it's four mana, but it copies anything on a land. Anything. Oh, did they play Soren Solemn Visitor? 
you've got one too. Oh, did they play, you know, Narset and Light and Master? You've got one too. It copies anything. Like, I cannot speak how awesome this card is. It's good. It's going to be okay in standard. I wrote about it. You play as one or two of because it gives you different lines of play. That's the good thing about this card. It expands your area of influence. Normally you have creatures, which you play, attack and block. You have incense, which deal damage. Or, you know, they draw a card or whatever. That's all they do. This guy does anything. He lets you play a different game than your opponents. It lets you copy your opponent's best spells. It lets you do lines that you thought were unbelievable. Maybe they play suspension field and you have no way to kill the big guy. Well, you play a suspension field and kill their guy. Like, this, cards like this are why I love Magic the Gathering. It can do anything you'd want and lets you lets your mind connect the dots in ways that normal lands and spells and creatures don't really do. So yeah. Also, the foil is a million dollars because it's going to go in every blue commander deck ever, which is going to go in all mine. So yeah, buy this card, play this card, explore this card. You know, explore ideas that lets you challenge the conventional attack and block with magic creatures. So enough about that mythic rare. Um, Raider spoils, spoils. Um, the Mardu Horde, as it turns out, likes warriors. Warrior, warrior, berserker, or rogue. Let's not talk about those. But there's a lot of warriors. So it, when you attack with them and you deal damage to them, you can pay a life. Who cares? There's a life draw card. I'll pay a life for a card any day of the week unless my life total is one. Or zero or less, because you can't. But it does give your creatures a plus one, plus so oh. I probably would start that in the game. Hey, speak of the devil, suspension field. He can copy that. Braid the Sands, he can copy that, but you're probably not playing Braid the Sands because it's horrible, so don't do that. Uh, Jeskai Banner, we're not playing two of those colors, or one of those colors. A Delve Creature. Okay, so we're an aggro deck. We're probably an aggro deck. Raid lends itself to wanting to attack, but this card spends four mana to draw two cards and lose two life and mill two. You're still probably going to play just because it draws two cards unlimited out of the top four, so you're probably going to get business spells. Um, which is what you want in Magic. You want business. I like business. Tyrant Scheming, it doesn't actually draw cards. You're actually down on cards. Don't play that. Um, a 1-5 five Flyer for 5. Don't play that. You're attacking. 0-4 oh, Outlast for 1. You're attacking. But the thing about limit, about uh, seal decks is that if you get too much of one thing, you just play that thing. So if you get a lot of card draw, a lot of defensive Outlast creatures, um, this guy can't block, but, you know, he can still attack. Necropolis Fiend. All right, so this guy is good, and then he has Delve. So he's kind of like a Tomb Stalker. He's a Tomb Stalker for the Modern Age, or I guess the Tomb Stalker is a, tomb, is a Necropolis Fiend for the Modern Age, because Necropolis Fiend, you want to play in Standard, not Modern. Anyway, um, he's a 4 or 5 for 8, for 9. Let's not focus on that. But you, he has Delve, so you can exile 4 or 5, and they only cost 4 or 5. You pay X and tap, and essentially Delve again. Creature gets minus X, minus X, where the card's equal to your Delve. So this card really wants us to delve. If you play this guy on a board, your opponents will lose. You have a 4-5. You will block their mediocre guy. Then when you untap, you will be delving, exiling on a guy. But you really will run into cards really quick with this guy. Thankfully, if you have cards such as uh, Bitter Revelation, that not only puts itself in the graveyard, draws two cards for you to put in the graveyard later, it also mills two. So these cards work well together. It is Yes, it's the delve mechanic, but as I've said before, Delve works in every deck, especially if it's the only Delve card you have. Then it's a, the best it can ever be. Here we have Salt Aura Patrol. This guy is good. 2-5 for 4. That is Outlast. Outlast if the games go long, which it looks like we're kind of getting a longer game with this deck. Uh, Ride of the Serpent kills a guy. Adds to your Delve. Um, don't play that. 3-3 three, three for 4 with First Strike if you pay for the mana, which you're probably only First Striking if you're attacking. It's not so much that you can pay for the First Strike, but that you threaten the First Strike. And here we have Bear's Companion. We're probably not playing that. So it looks right now to me that we're getting more of a control approach with these cards, which we can do. I like control. Manus Rider. We opened that before. We're not playing it. Manus of the High Spire. Mystic Monastery. This is a seated pack for Jeskai. What's going on here? I draw two cards. As to your Delve. A 3-3 Delve for 6. Maybe a double. You got to be careful. If you're playing Doodle for your turn, which you raise dead or get back two creatures from your graveyard that they have killed, Make sure you don't delve them away, kids. If you delve them and then draw this card, you're gonna feel real sad. Um, this guy was a this pack was a just guy pack. You can't win them all, kids. You can't win them all. You can try, and I try, but I often lose more than I win. Deflecting Palm. It's a just guy pack. Um, I wrote about this card in my article. 
This kind of effect is really cheap. It's two mana to fog their guy. Let's say it's a five power guy. Not unreasonable. You fog the five, you deal them five, and then they're dead. D-E-D, -E -D, dead. Marty Warshrieker, that's good. It fixes our mana. Five, three. All right, so we're getting more mid-rangey. Bitter Revelation. So we're not playing these green or, green or blue cards, which is most of this pack. So Bitter Revelation, the Bitter Revelations, the bigger Outlast guys, the card draws, the big guys, I think we're going to be attacking. Awaken the Bear and Carol Lich Lord. Well, we're not Awakening the Bear. Um, we're probably not Carol Lich Lording either. He's a sweet guy. He's a Sedraxis, or he's a um, Cedrus the Traitor King, but as a guy, and they get Flying and Trample. But we're not playing blue or green. Bloodsucker, this guy does not suck, despite his name. 2-2 Two -two Prowess, they get the lifelink if you cast a spell, that's pretty good. Kill shot is removal. 2-8, uh, uh, 2-8 for 5, if you really want to block, you can block. Um, okay, so that's our pack. So normally the Mardu Horde is a, you know, aggro sort of deck, lots of morph guys, they can attack. But we've got some mid-range guys, 3-3s three for 4, you know, hill giants, as they're known. Um, we got some hill giants, we've got some card draws. Sack this guy if they get bigger, some Outlast, the Necropolis Fiend. I feel like this deck is a solid three color because I did not see many fixing. We had a Mon Mystic Monastery. We don't have any fixing. We can barely play three colors, maybe even two colors, maybe red, black. But I don't feel we had enough playables to play red, black, control. <laughs> red, black is known for some control colors. So if you open up the Mardu Horde and battle with speed, maybe you battle with slow. Have you ever thought about slow? So battle with slow, open this up in your pre-release, tell me in the comments down there if you battle with slow or speed, if you were Sonic the Hedgehog, or if you were, you know, a, a turtle, a turtle from Mario, a Koopa. So let me know about that, how you did. I want to know because I don't feel like this was exactly harnessing the Mardu Horde the best it can. But I did the other clans, which they do harness those, and you can watch those videos here on the left. Um, but you can like this video, you can subscribe to this video, and you can make sure that I get to do more of these in the future if you liked it. If you didn't, just don't say anything bad about me, please. But uh, I will check you out next time. Thanks for watching, guys.